high sensitivity C-reactive protein, or HSCRP, increases during aging. And that's what we can see here, with levels of CRP on the y-axis plotted against age, starting with 18-year-olds on the left, all the way up through people who are older than 70 on the right. In youth, average CRP levels are 0.8 milligrams per liter. And then we can see the age-related increase such that people who are older than 70 have average CRP values that are double that, 1.6 milligrams per liter. Now, the age-related increase for CRP is potentially important because a relatively higher CRP or level of CRP is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we can see here. This is a meta-analysis of 27 studies that included more than 480,000 people for the association between all-cause mortality risk with HSCRP. Now, in terms of what's significant, we put up the dashed red line at a hazard ratio of one, and note that when the dashed black lines, that's the 95% confidence interval, when that's completely above or below one, we have a, a statistically significant association. Now, in this case, we can see that that's true for CRP that's greater than one milligram per liter. So as CRP increases, we can see that increased association for all-cause mortality risk. Now, in youth, you can see that the upper limit of the range for CRP is about one milligram per, per liter, which then raises the question, is less than one milligram per liter optimal for HSCRP? So for that, we go back to the all-cause mortality plot, more specifically within the zero to one milligram per liter range. And there we can see that HSCRP does indeed increase above zero up until the one milligram per liter range. And that's a significant uh, increase as you can see that both of the dashed black lines are completely above one. In other words, for all cause mortality risk, as close to zero as possible may be optimal for HSCRP. Now with these data in mind, what can reduce HSCRP? So first let's take a look at which foods are significantly correlated with lower levels of HSCRP. And as a quick sidestep, in terms of looking at food correlations with HSCRP, let's detail the approach that I'm gonna go through in this video. So every day since April of 2015, I've weighed all of my food prior to intake using a food scale. I then entered that data into Chronometer, and if you're interested in using Chronometer, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. And then because each blood test since 2015 has a corresponding average diet composition, I can then calculate correlations for diet, including macro and micronutrients and individual foods with blood biomarkers. I then alter my diet with the goal of improving the blood biomarkers. And then after each blood test, I recalculate these correlations and then starting the process over, increasing certain foods, decreasing certain foods based on how the correlations look. All right, so with, the, with these data in mind, which foods are significantly correlated with lower HSCRP? Now in my data, that happens to be turmeric, but as a quick again sidestep, Note that although I've weighed all of my food since 2015, I only started tracking HSCRP in 2018. So I have 27 blood tests over that five plus year span for uh, HSCRP versus food intake. So the strongest correlation is with turmeric and that's what we can see here. More specifically, we can see that a relatively higher intake of turmeric, average daily turmeric intake, is significantly correlated with lower HSCRP. Now, in terms of how I get that turmeric into my diet, I use ground uh, powder, and uh, in, that's in contrast with the whole food, more close to the whole food, which is uh, the turmeric root. For some reason, eating the root tastes like soap to me and ruins anything that it's in, whereas using the powder, I add that to cooked meals, and it doesn't ruin the food. It actually helps with taste and texture. All right, so this is just one example, and arguably, this is the strongest correlation for foods with lower HSCRP in my data. What about other foods? Are they significantly correlated with HSCRP? And that's what we can see here. This is a, the list for foods that are nominally significant. That's a p-value less than 0.05 that are significantly correlated with lower HSCRP. And for those that are going to say, I haven't calculated a false discovery rate, this is true. I don't want to exclude any data because I don't know if any of these foods are actually causing lower HSCRP. So I try to follow as much of the data as possible. And by including a false discovery rate, I may be excluding data. Uh, thereby limiting my ability to potentially lower HSCRP. So when considering these associations with, or sorry, correlations with lower HSCRP, uh, I keep my intake of them relatively high. And for those who want the exact amounts, I'll put the link to the video for my diet composition and in terms of the exact amounts for these foods in the right corner. Now, conversely, in terms of foods that are correlated with lower CRP, there are also foods in my data that are significantly correlated with higher CRP as shown here. 
So with that in mind, the goal here is to minimize intake. So with this approach in mind, try to increase foods or keep relatively high foods that are significantly correlated with lower CRP and minimize foods that are significantly correlated with higher CRP in support of that approach. For the last 10 blood tests, my CRP levels had been less than the, the, the detection limit, Quest detection limit, which is 0.3 milligrams per liter. So that would suggest that I'm on the, I'm on the right track for using this approach. Now, food intake may not be the only thing that's potentially impacting, if correlation equals causation, HSCRP in my data. So which other factors may be impacting HSCRP? And in my case, a higher daily heart rate, not the resting heart rate, but the higher heart rate for the full day, higher average daily heart rate, is significantly correlated with HSCRP in my data. And that's what we can see here. So I, I only had the idea to start tracking the average daily heart rate, even though I've worn a fitness tracker, as shown there, since 2018. I only had that idea in 2020. So this is three plus years of data, and this is average daily heart rate data for 19 blood tests, 19 HSCRP blood tests. And there we can see a significant positive correlation. In other words, when there's more activity, more physical activity and or stress, because stress, uh, including emotional or work stress, uh, can impact the daily uh, heart rate too. When there's more of that in between blood tests, that's significantly correlated with a higher HSCRP. Conversely, when there's relatively lower levels of activity and or stress in, in between blood tests, the next blood test is more likely to have a lower HSCRP, at least based on this correlation. So when considering these data, it suggests that for me to minimize HSCRP, that suggests an optimal training activity and or stress that, you know, again, because stress can impact the daily heart rate of 55 to 57 beats per minute as the full day average daily heart rate. Uh, to put that into perspective, my average resting heart rate, RHR, and that's for the month of May in 2023, was 42.6 beats per minute, which suggests that going 12 to 14 beats per minute above my daily heart rate may be optimal for keeping HSCRP low. And I don't know if it's turmeric. I don't know if it's by minimizing activity while still trying to maximize fitness, but that's the story for HSCRP. But it also raises another question. Is the amount of physical activity that optimizes fitness different from the amount that may optimize longevity? I could definitely train more. And when considering that that's, associated, or that's significantly correlated with higher HSCRP, that may not be good for systemic health. Conversely, if I undertrain, that may not be good for fitness while potentially being good for HSCRP. So what's that dose that can optimize physical fitness, but then also uh, maximize blood biomarkers and potentially longevity? More on that in a future video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing using Cyfox Health, and note that their panel is different from the at-home metabolomics, so they are complementary measures, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dietran brand, that link and all the other discount links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.